It's been suggested that a radial approach might actually delay timed reperfusion, which wouldn't particularly be a, a, something that anyone would like to do. So what we would like to find out is, what is the comparison between a radial and a transfemoral approach in terms of time to balloon? And in order to answer this question, I'm in Paris at the EuroPCR, and I'm with uh, Dr. Joel Gabriel Secco, University of Easton Piedmont, and uh, the hospital at Pissarro, Italy there. First, you've done a study now on about, what, 900 people? Yeah. To getting a radial axis, actually, it's really, really fast. You can go, you can be fast as much as with a femoral approach. Uh, the only difference is that you have to be a radialist. So if you're starting like radial, before like doing intervention maybe in acute MI, it's maybe better if you do like a 200 procedures by radial. Then when you get, when you are, when you can say I'm a radialist, then the, the time, it's even smaller actually. So once you, you move from transfemoral to a, a radial approach, you need to be comfortable doing the procedure before you really go to STEMI. Yeah, you, you need to, to be comfortable, of course. You need to know because you are, you are treating a patient that is having an acute MI, so you can have a delay, actually, treating him. But still, when after I, th I would say 150 is not that much, even if everybody thinks that radial is, is harder. No, it's not. Radial is easier. You just have to be a radialist, but at the end of the way, it's going to be easier because managing an artery that is so small, it does not give you serious complication. So it's, it's really easier. You just have to, to be a radialist, actually. And to be a radialist, every, everyone can be a radialist. Just perform 100 elective patients, and then you will find that it's easier. So in terms of the actual time difference, it, it simply was not statistically significant? No. We, basically, we evaluated 900 patients. Uh, and of course, my center, is, as I was telling you, is a radialist center. So most of the patients were treated like from a radial approach, 75% uh, mostly. And uh, the 25% were treated like a femoral approach. Uh, of course, I have to honestly say that the femoral approach is somehow, sometime, uh, reserved to people with a worse Kilip class presentation or cardiogenic shock. Though this, this thing can maybe a little bit like manage our data, but whatever, we, were, we see that there is no difference in the door to balloon time between the radio and the femoral approach. And I can tell you another thing that in my study, we actually used the radial approach even in cardiogenic shock. Of course, we were. We were putting him an intraortic balloon pump, and of course we were using the femoral, but then if the pulse come out, we use the radial. Why should we go femoral? Wow, so you kind of did, uh, you used both approaches, but you used the radial for the actual procedure. Yeah, of course, yes. Yes, we, we, we do, the, we, we use, of course we have to use the femoral for the intraortic balloon pump, yes. but if for the procedure, for the angioplasty, for the primary PCI, if I can feel the radial, and if it's a good radial, I go radial. So if speed is not an issue, timing is not an issue, are there other advantages to the radial approach from a operator's point of view? Okay, from the operator point of view, basically it's, um, okay, we have one worse thing, that is the radiation exposure. We have to say that even if the new data that are coming from Holland, they are gonna present it here in EuroPCR, they found no difference between radiation exposure in femoral or radial approach. You just have to move a little bit farther from the patient, and then you will be like as a femoralist. Then the most important thing, using a radial, maybe even in the acute MI, is that when you're treating a patient with an acute MI, you just keep giving him drugs, mm -hmm. like GPDB3 inhibitors, and then maybe bivalirudine we use, and then maybe we use a lot of, a lot of drugs, antiplatelet, right? So that means, that means that this patient is a high risk of bleeding. Well, if this patient is gonna bleed from the radial rotary, it's not a big issue. It's not like the femoral. So you can work, actually, the big advantage is that the operator can work a little bit more, feeling like more comfortable. Because if, okay, I have something here, but it's, it's not an issue. I'm not gonna have a retroperitoneal hematoma or whatever. Maybe one of the best thing is thinking using the radial in the STEMI patient. Because this is where you can have more advantage because you can have like uh, the advantage of course of less vascular complication, less, ble as ble less bleeding complication that are really correlated with outcomes of patients. These are studies that have already been presented here, it's well known. Actually, after you will do this, 
I'm sure that everybody of us will turn radialist because you will do elective patient as well. Is there anyone that you wouldn't approach with STEMI radio? You'd still go back with femoral access. Um, if I feel if I feel the radial, uh, I probably try to go radial. Uh, honestly, if I have like a patient that is like like a very very old lady, um, with a maybe like a little bit overweight and very old, so I'm expecting that this old lady can have like a small radial. That's fine. Maybe I can try to go with a fi uh, with a five French catheter in the in the STEMI patient. I just have to treat the carpet region. Then if I see like that the procedure is going to be like a, a complex procedure, well, I treat the culpit region, I get a timid flow in the coronary artery, and then I'll go maybe for a, a more complex procedure where I do bifurcation, two-stand technique. Well, then I have to go femoral, of course, if the, if the artery doesn't fit like a, at least a six French catheter. The results that Dr. Secco is talking about are very similar to what we've had here in the United States. I reported that news out of the SCII meeting before coming over here to Paris. It's looking like femoral, uh, there is no uh, real delay in time to balloon with that particular approach. For Cardiosource Interventional News, I'm Rick McGuire.